present this topic in front of two of my two teachers so is it visible yes it is visible go ahead please so colchicine in covid 19 and clinic little bit of clinical pharmacology we will discuss so this will be uh, the flow of my presentation that is mechanism of colchicine a little bit what about clinical studies done on colchicine and covid 19 some safety concerns and uh, one real life case uh, we will discuss so we know this two figure very no uh, they are very well known personalities in bengal gupi and bagha what they have they have an unique uh, bore that is by clapping their hand they can visit anywhere so the if they want uh, clap here they can reach if they want to reach usa uh, they will uh, uh, reach usa the no path or no vehicle is required but this is little uh, obvious that we all did these things happen in our uh, comics uh, life but it is not a real world scenario we need some path or vehicle to move and cells also require some path or we can say to for movement of the cells uh it uh, they require microtubules and as we are going uh, to talk about colchicine uh, we need to know about microtubules also and the functions of microtubules we'll discuss little bit to understand the uh, mechanism of action of colchicine so we all already discussed about that colchicine is currently fda approved for the prevention and treatment of gout players in adults with gout and also another indication that is the familial mediterranean fever there are off label uses for colchicine many including acute calcium pyrophosphate arthritis also known as pseudo gout sarcoid psoriatic arthritis bechet's disease and pericarditis and i shall also uh, discuss one study that have shown colchicine's efficacy in preventing major cardiovascular adverse event among patients who suffered a recent myocardial infarction so this cartoon actually depicts the mechanism of colchicine so we talked about microtubule colchicine is an inhibitor of mitosis and microtubule assembly we discuss that microtubule is that path by which one cell can move to other or some intracellular item can move from one side to another side and that ultimately helps in mitosis so colchicine binds to soluble non polymerized tubulin heterodimers to form a tight tubulin colchicine complex and it has been seen that even at lower doses colchicine interferes with microtubule formation and in higher doses they generally promotes microtubule depolymerization furthermore the polymerization of colchicine bound tubulin occurs in a manner that closely related to microtubule assembly and therefore that results in a polymer with different morphology causing a distortion in the normal tubulin polymerization and ultimately microtubule generation so as microtubules are involved in variety of cellular processes such as cell division maintenance of cell shape cell signaling signal transduction and cell migration also that cellular transport colchicine can inhibit this all functions as well as it also block the neutrophil chemotaxis so most of the anti inflammatory effects of colchicine are likely due to this disruption of microtubule function and hence the cells with 
high proliferative rates are disproportionately affected by colchicin and we will discuss during the adverse effects of colchicin and that gi tract and that is why the gi tract is most commonly affected by colchicin and the inhibition of amoeboid motility by colchicin that prevents disruption of membrane dependent functions such as chemotaxis and phagocytosis apart from that colchicin has an inhibitory effect on neutrophil function such as adhesiveness motility degranulation of lysosome and neutrophil chemotaxis they decrease the expression of adhesion molecules on neutrophil membranes that ultimately leads to significant inhibition in the migration and interaction with that endothelial cells therefore they also reduce different types of pro inflammatory cytokines here we we had the one of the most important cytokines are interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tnf alpha and surprisingly why neutrophil is the place where colchicin accumulates and generally it is more than 16 times than the peak concentration that observed in the plasma why that is happening because in neutrophil there is very little or rather no expression of p glycoprotein we all know that p glycoprotein is an efflux protein to, it, it, present in neutrophils and that is not present in neutrophils therefore the accumulation of colchicin it is much more in neutrophils compared to its serum level so these all are the action apart from that it has been seen that they have a inhibition on reactive oxygen species mediated reaction so as a whole they have a anti inflammatory role and they don't have that immuno suppression so as we are talking about covid 19 the cold we should emphasize on the mechanism of colchicin as it reduces both the generation of tnf alpha by macrophages and its receptor on the endothelial cells and ultimately it modulates the lipopolysaccharide induced secretion of tnf alpha by other macrophages like in uh, liver and also it down regulates the tnf alpha receptor in the endothelial cells that is why this molecule has some promising role in sars cov 2 infection so in this diagram it has been clear that where the colchicin act this nalp3 inflammasome is one of the most important factor which cause the or rather we can say if the if it is it helps in triggering the uh, production of the cytokine release storm by formation of more tnf alpha interleukin 6 interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18 so here the colchicin block that in nalp3 inflammasome activity and also that caspas activation and i ultimately il1 beta processing apart from that it has also role in antigen presentation in the already uh, it was discussed about that endothelial cells e selecting and vgf recruitment of neutrophils and that action against ros so there are some studies also which suggest that it has some antiviral role as we are talking about microtubule or rather tubulin this tubulin ligands have the potential to inhibit the replication of viruses because this replication of viruses also depend on that microtubule network and it was seen that the intracellular transport of viral particle in the host cell including particle trafficking in later stage of the infection is mediated by the microtubules and associated proteins so 
by inhibiting this microtubule polymerization colchicine can cause a significant decrease in viral replication and it was seen in case of flavivirus including dengue zika viruses there are some studies which suggest that it blocks the transport and reduce the replication of some hepatitis virus respiratory syncytial virus and also during this process by of inhibiting the respiratory syncytial virus uh, there is they, they had shown to significantly decrease the interleukin 6 and tnf alpha level and why we as we are talking about coronaviruses coronaviruses replication that means their replication moves in the cell in a manner that corresponds to same like microtubule associated transport and that inducing the formation of double membrane vesicles in the infected cells the infection of the cells by coronaviruses involves the interaction of cytoplasmic tail of the spike protein with cytoskeletal proteins like tubulin so this interaction leads to viral entry furthermore the microtubules are involved in the transport and assembly of the spike proteins into the virions during the replication cycle so here there is a hypothesis like that the colchicin tubulin complex may block the viral entry and replication but this hypothesis requires further confirmation and now we are going to discuss about this study this is a preprint uh, 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 study uh, my previous speaker beautifully mentioned about this col corona trial and this is the preprint result of col corona we will uh, discuss this a little because this is a very beautiful trial on colchicin so actually this trial was uh, the the enrollment was started during march 2020 and was completed in december 2020 and uh, results are available not in uh, any specific journal but in uh, in, in preprint version so uh, this is from preprint version but we should also th- uh, uh, acknowledge that this uh, trial is done uh, with, with the funding of a very good society that is the uh, the the gate and melinda foundation bill gates foundation actually so so the 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 this is a randomized double blind placebo controlled investigator initiated trial and one arm it was colchicin 0.5 mg twice daily for first three days and then once daily for 27 days total duration is 30 days and another arm is placebo and it is one is to one so total 4488 patients underwent randomizations and were followed for 30 days i am just want to mention few important inclusion criteria of this trial like that number one the patient should be at least 40 years of age had received a diagnosis of covid-19 within 24 hours of enrollment they were not currently hospitalized and not under immediate consideration for hospitalization presented with at least one of the following high risk criteria like any one criteria any one high risk criteria like number one age is seven, more, more than equal to 70 years obesity bmi cut off is 30 kg per meter square diabetes or uncontrolled hypertension systolic blood pressure is more than equal to 150 known respiratory disease known heart failure known coronary disease or fever at least 38.4 degree celsius within the last 48 hours so these are the inclusion criteria if these are possible and another is that uh, those patients should have the combination the high neutrophil count and low lymphocyte count so they are the high risk uh, patients were included in this particular trial the 
GI problem patients like inflammatory bowel disease, chronic diarrhea, malabsorptions, or EGFR less than 30, severe liver, liver disease, they were out of the trial. So now if we, if we try to dissect the trial data, so this is very interesting. So in uh, this, the risk of primary composite efficacy endpoint, that means efficacy endpoint was death or hospitalization, due to COVID-19 infection in the 30 days following randomization was lower among the patients who were randomly assigned to receive colchicin than among those who received placebo. Because of the shortage of reagents, because in initially there was some shortage of reagents for uh, PCR testing and the restriction in the use of such testing early in the pandemic. So, the diagnosis of probable COVID-19 through an epidemiological link or some compatible symptoms was initially allowed in the study. When the 93% of the patients who had formal diagnosis of COVID-19 are considered, the benefit of colchicine on the primary efficacy point was more marked. So in this case, in the lower portion, we can see here, they are those patients who are PCR proven COVID-19 patient. And here we can see in the primary composite outcome, there is a statistically significant benefit. And that is 25% benefit. And because you can see that here, the odds ratio is 0.75. And this is the 0 0.04. But as it, it was initially, it was uh, planned to have a intention to treat uh, analysis, so that therefore, they have to take all the data and for that there are some possibility of mixing with other cases also. And that is why, there may, the, though there is some benefit, the odds ratio is 0.79, but the upper limit of confidence interval is just cross one. So that is why the p-value becomes 0 0.08. So as if we, if we can do the dissection with in this result also, when the patients are PCR proven COVID-19, there is a clear cut benefit it has been seen in favor of colchicine. And one interesting finding, that is they had done some subgroup analysis in all cases. Now, if we can see the diabetes history, so there is some benefit. So here the primary endpoint is much lesser compared to placebo, and it is 0.61. Though there is, again, that problem happened, the upper limit of confidence interval just crossed one, and that is why it was uh, uh, not statistically significant. But it is important to note that diabetes is a pro-inflammatory state, and which might explain the greater risk of complications of COVID-19 in patients afflicted by this, this disease. But if we use colchicine in those groups, maybe we will get some benefit. Now, another study, though this is a very uh, uh, small sample size study, and it is published in BMJ, uh, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial. And here, the intervention arm is taking insulin, uh, colchicine a little bit different than the previous study. And they are taking 0.5 milligram twice daily for five days, then 0.5 milligram twice daily for five days. So 10 days therapy. Now, if we can see the result. So here we will found that there is a clear cut benefit in terms of uh, need of cumulative oxygen. So we are now facing problems in our country with oxygen. So whether use of colchicine can help us in this regard, we need to explore. So 72 uh, patients were included in this study, 36 for placebo and 36 for colchicine. They completed the study. The median time of need for supplemental oxygen was four days 
for the colchicine group, whereas 6.5 days for the placebo group. And the next, this picture we can see the median time of hospitalization was seven days for the colchicine group, whereas nine days for the placebo group. And this is statistically significant. Both of these are statistically significant. P value is point, less than 0 0.001. And one important finding, though this is a secondary outcome of this particular study, at day two, the 67% versus 86% of the patients maintained the need for supplemental oxygen. Whereas at day seven, the values were 9% versus 42% in the colchicine and placebo group. So by this, we can say that there is some possibility that if we use early colchicine, that will reduce the hospital stay along with the need of oxygen, supplemental oxygen. But again, we need to prove this with further studies. And this particular study also measures some biochemical marker. And here we see, we see here in this diagram, there is a significant reduction in the CRP value compared to the placebo arm. And the neutrophil lymphocyte count, this is the placebo arm, and this is the colchicine arm. There is reduction at day seven, if we compare it both. Uh, though this, uh, these differences are not that much, uh, we can say this result should be taken as a uh, with a pinch of salt. So again, this is maybe due to that small sample size of 72. We need to confirm it uh, by, by, by more robust studies. And this is the Greco-19 randomized clinical trial. The effect of colchicine versus standard care on cardiac and inflammatory biomarkers and clinical outcomes in patients hospitalized with coronaviruses and 105 patients were included in this study. The participants who received colchicine had statistically significant improved time to cl uh, uh, clinical deterioration and there were no significant difference though in HSCRP and CRP levels. So this is a uh, thing that biochemical benefit was not seen in this particular study, but there is uh, significantly improved that in the time to clinical deterioration. And here I must say here in Greco-19, when it was started, uh, maximum of these patients were also the standard of care was changed because of that uh, we, we, we recovery trial finding of uh, getting the benefits from the uh, steroids, corticosteroids. So the dexamethasone was added in the standard of care in both arms. So on top of dex, uh, dexamethasone also, in, uh, which is present in both arms, in the colchicine arm had statistically significant improved time to clinical deterioration. So this we need to uh, give emphasis and we need to plan for some future studies. Now, regarding safety pharmacology, the clinical pharmacokinetics is very important to understand as uh, the absorption, it is generally in the jejunum, ileum and accumulates in the tissues. There is much accumulation in the tissues and the CYP3A4 and the P-glycoprotein are, uh, they are metabolized by, uh, this drug is metabolized by these uh, enzymes. And that is why the inhibitors like if we use antacids or cimetidine, some antibiotics like erythromycin, tetracycline, uh, calcium channel blockers, such as diltiazem or ver verapamil, immunosuppressants like cyclosporin, tacrolimus, HIV protease inhibitors, like initially it was, uh, we know that lopinavir, ritonavir was given in some uh, COVID-19 patients, some agile antifungals, they are, uh, generally the inhibitor, so the colchicine concentration will be increased and there is a chance of toxicity. So onset of action is 24 hour via the oral route. The half-life is nine hour. Does not penetrate brain tissue, heart muscle or skeletal muscle. So its capacity to accumulate in inflammatory cells 
reaching higher concentration than plasma levels that already we had discussed the 16 times more concentration than plasma in uh, neutrophils. And that is also associated with markedly longer duration of action. So regarding the dose, there are different controversies, but these are the few doses that was used in different uh, randomized control trials with uh, colchicin that already we had discussed. The uh, 0.5 milligram twice daily dose, and it, it, this is generally done in the full corona trial, twice daily for the first three days, and then once daily for last uh, 27 days, total one month therapy. Another uh, study that they use 0.6 milligram twice daily for 30 days, 0.5 milligram twice daily with no time limit, one milligram daily for 30 days, and another study Already we had discussed that 0.5 milligram twice daily for five days and 0.5 milligram twice daily for another five days. So total 10 days therapy. So these are the adverse reactions. Commonly the GI adverse effects like diarrhea, pharyngolaryngeal pain. So this can be a confusion for us also because we all know that this type of symptoms are also present with COVID-19. So we have to identify it carefully. But these symptoms are mild, transient, and reversible upon lowering the dose. There are rare uh, side effects like blood dyspraxias, myelosuppression, leukopenia, granulocytopenia, thrombocytopenia, and aplastic anemia. There is a chance of neuromuscular toxicity, like myotoxicity, including rhabdomyolysis. Specifically, if we use some other drugs which can produce neuromuscular toxicity, and there are some two to three case reports because there is one study very initially done with uh, statin, statin and in COVID-19. And there are some case reports from those studies that rhabdomyolysis are co coming up. But uh, generally happen that if we the person is susceptible to rhabdomyolysis with uh, statin, uh, they may also, uh, this neuromuscular toxicity may be enhanced by using colchicin. So this was the in initial thing what I, I want to mention while uh, talking about the indication of colchicin. So colchicin's efficacy in preventing major cardiovascular adverse events among those patients who suffered recent myocardial infarction was established by this study. It was published in 2019. So we all know that cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular uh, bad outcome with COVID-19 also. So whether if we use this drug in COVID-19 patient, whether they can be beneficial in preventing major adverse cardiovascular events. So now last, this is my last slide and uh, the epilogue, I think the uh, take home message will come from our uh, uh, respected chairpersons when, while discussing this case. That are 56 year diabetic patients, hypertension, associated hypertension, COVID 19 patients. So, fifth day of treatment initiation, uh, we had visited, the, and it was, uh, it, it was the eighth day of fever actually, the fifth day of treatment initiation with that doxycycline, ivermectin, and uh, other drugs. So, in eighth day, the fever is there, associated symptoms was severe headache and cough, and this is the initial investigation report at that day, that CRT was around 38, D-dimer was 0.51, and it was found that this particular patient is poorly controlled diabetes, the HbA1c is 8.8% on OADs, the saturation is 98%, patient will not, a patient is not going to uh, uh, admit because of unavailability of bed, and what to do now? So in this patient, we had started colchicin, 0.5 milligram thrice daily. And uh, for five days, it was uh, when uh, the second days, the fever gone. And the five days repose, today we, got, we found the uh, report. The CRP was around 30. Uh, the D-dimer was a little bit elevated now. The, the patient was, the patient is on enoxaparin 40, uh, subcutaneous once daily. The D-dimer is now around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 like that. So it is elevated, but the symptoms gone. The saturation is maintaining. No fever, no headache, uh, but no very little cough. 
so this was done the, with colchicine specifically as this patient has poorly controlled diabetes and with this type of crp if we think to start with corticosteroid that can lead to different atrocities because patient will not going to admit so we have some options like colchicine in uh, this type of cases but we need to generate more more data on this and that is why we have two pioneers like professor shantanu kumar tripathi in field of clinical pharmacology and professor udash ghosh sir in field of internal medicine so i request both of my chair person sirs that whether we can plan one academic clinical trial or rather a real world evidence studies on this type of drug and we which is very cheap and this time of disaster now that we our patients are not getting beds oxygen is not that much available so whether we should plan for this type of study with uh, colchicin and we we some we may find uh, some ray of hope and this is the plant we all know that this is the plant source of colchicin and it, this plant is available or the, this medicine is available in egypt from 1500 bc and the name of this plant is autumn crocus so thank you and i am uh, eagerly waiting for our chair respected chairperson sir's comments and other respected delegates comments thank you sir